Okay, it is the time. We're just going to delay a couple minutes because I know we had some people that said that they were going to be coming here to the webinar. Um, I'm always late to everything by a couple of minutes, right, Charlie? Well, yeah, but <laughs> you know, I like to be places early, so I'm normally when I'm at a webinar or or another event, I'm there a little bit early. But you have gotten to the right place. This is the webinar that we had promised here That's on right. how to repair your own legend now. But we're going to wait for a couple people that I know had told us that they were going to be well, here. Well, I'm, I'm seeing some people coming in here, so okay. this is looking good. And what we're doing, too, is we're just checking some things that we have online. We're going to be sending you to some of these uh, as we get in here. And the main one that we're going to be talking about is repairyourownlegendnow.com. And when people log in there, then they go to the next page, and it's really what we're covering. So if you want to do that now in preparation, you can do that too, or you can just stay here with the webinar and exactly what we're doing. But we're going to be running down some of those things with some more explanation about what we have been doing for quite some time. Because, And maybe a little background to those that have gotten here on time, and we do appreciate your being on time, and we'll get the rest of it started. But we really got into this because we've done so much of the create your own legend but people were saying look I have trouble online well yeah this just seems to be a really hot topic right now uh, it's really the internet and people's presence on the internet has just kind of matured to the point where there's so much content that people are starting to realize well okay there's also negative content That's and right. once that starts to build up it can just go wild we've talked about this a lot of times in a lot of places from a psychological point of view I mean it's just kind of human nature we seem to be much more interested in the juicy negative stuff uh, than we are. There's not a lot of people gossiping about positive things, right? No, it's unfortunate. And gossip is. Uh, what's? I wish I could remember that famous quote that you know a uh, uh, a negative thing goes around the world faster than a positive thing has a chance to get out the door. I forget. I, you know, yeah, there's a and famous Franklin quote. Franklin has a few things yeah. that we that we've done in some of our other. Um, it just kind of. Posts. You know, so we have all these great tools for building a personal brand online under the whole banner of create your own legend now. It's just a logical fit to this is the negative side of the positive coin, if you will. I mean, right. so once you discover that you've got something about you online or about your business that is doing some damage to you, well, we're going to use pretty much those same kinds of tools that we have on our create your own legend side, but we're using it for the specific purpose now of repairing some damage. and. Uh, and cleaning up things. And we'll go all over that with you here. Yeah. So, Dr. Mark, I, I see that we're, we, we you know, get, we, I think we, we can get started. People here, we're about three minutes uh, past the time. We do appreciate everybody uh, uh, arriving here. So now we'll get started with this. That's right. So, welcome to How to Repair Your Own Legend Now. We appreciate your coming here and getting information from us. So we've just got a little bit of some bookkeeping kinds of things here to go over with you as we start. We're going to cover the four areas of this that, that we feel are really important. We call that assess, correct, make over, and monitor. Right. So we're going to cover those things. We would like you there on the webinar, you can type in questions to us. You can see that right there on your screen right now. Uh, we can't get to all these questions right here. We know that. I'll be monitoring over here as Dr. Mark is doing some other things over there. I'll be monitoring what these questions are and I'll jot down some of these questions and we'll answer some in those four areas and every time we finish an area we'll answer a couple questions, maybe one or two questions and then we'll right. move on. But rest assured, I mean, feel free to put in uh, your questions now because we will yes. answer all of your questions. It's just that the ones we can't get to during the webinar itself, we're going to send you back by email. Right, we'll email you. And if you send us a really awesome question, we may actually create a whole podcast about it uh, separately afterwards because we love to answer questions. So. Well, and, and we're also, we enjoy doing this with other people. Mm -hmm. So that if you've got a few questions here or you have some expertise in this area and would like to do a joint product with us here and be on a webinar with us directly as one of the people speaking on it, we'd love to do that with you That's too. That's right. Also, um, as a treat for everybody that's able to see this uh, as the webinar, we're going to have some pop-ups during this, some specials for you, some things that uh, you can sign up for. Some are free, some are more advanced, uh, and you can decide whether you want it or not. But they're only going to stay up for a that's short right. period. So you got to pay attention. Yeah, pay attention, because we know that sometimes we can drift off. I, myself, every once in a while, might put something else that I'm working on. And if you're checking your email uh, or tweeting away while uh, while we're talking here, you may miss you out may on a great deal. It. And but we're not, we're not going to tell you. It's right. just going to be there for It'll a short period. Happen. So we, we want you to pay attention for that. And also at the end, 
for everybody who sticks around, we're going to have oh, a, a free gift. Did. You think people aren't going to stick around? I know this they're going to, but the very, very end, it is. It's very, very important information. But and for we, those of you who need a, a an incentive to stick around, we uh, have a, a giveaway at the end. We're not selling anything at the end of this webinar. Right. Uh, we do have a very, uh, very nice gift for you at the end, though. It's uh, worth over four hundred dollars. It includes well, it itself uh, is part of that, but it also includes well over four hundred dollars of discounts as well as free giveaways. Right. So it will be some additional totally information. yours just for, uh, for getting to the end of this webinar, and uh, we'll make that as painless as possible. Yes, absolutely. So, Dr. Mark, let's get to how to repair your own legend now. Now, I've got a few notes in here, and I'll keep referring to that. Let's start off right away with assess. Right. So, the, I mean, the first thing, you th think of this as you can't come into the emergency room, uh, you've had uh, an injury to your leg or something like that. I mean, the first thing that happens in the emergency room is that you're going to do a little triage, right? Uh, the nurse is going to assess the severity of your injury and figure out whether you are really in need of emergency care or whether you're injured but okay enough that you can take your time to really get proper treatment. Well, Dr. Mark, and being a guy that's been to the emergency room several times myself with my six kidney stones, um, so I drink a lot. I have things off, but I've been having it. So I'm had to get up. And he doesn't mean alcohol. Take care of he it. says he drinks. Oh a lot. no 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 no! Just keep those fluids going through me. But so many times when I'm in there and I'm in some pain, but then somebody else would come in and they're cut up or they've got heart problems. Sure, they're going first. They're going to the front. So line. you're talking about people here who really need a repair. Now, when we say assess, what what you're really going to do is you're going to sit down at Google and other search engines, and you're going to start searching for your name, for things that are relevant to your business, or so your business name if, if you're not operating under your own name, uh, and other key words that are really important uh, to your online brand, your online reputation. And you want to see what you find, right? Yes, absolutely. And do we just go to that first page, Dr. Mark? Let's take people a little further. No, I mean, obviously, if, if you're finding, well, let's back up. What, what what can you possibly find there? I, I would say there's three major categories, right? You can find stuff about you that's uh, you know that's either good or neutral. You can find nothing about you, or you could find something that you're not too happy to find. So those are the three things you're looking for. And you're right, we don't just want to stop at page one. We want to dig into the first several pages. Uh, we want to probe deeper, you know, once we have done our emergency assessment. But to our way of thinking, those first three pages of results. Those are the emergency zone, you know. So if you're finding negative content within those first three uh, pages, you you probably need to take immediate action. So negative content could be a review site, and then they right. said something negative about you, and it appears now when you do a search in Google about yourself, you will find that negative comment on there. You know, we all love some of those review sites. Oh, yeah. Wow, as a consumer, and I can go find my plumber, and I can find out that this guy really shows up on time, and he puts a mat down, and he doesn't dirty what's going on here. But, but the that reverse is just, of that, well, for the it, doctor, the attorney, the accountant... Those kind of sites have just exploded they have. in the last year to two and years. And will continue to. Right. So, I mean, things that used to be just about, you know, your handyman or household service kind of uh, industry where people could go in and do a little report card... It is now being really pushed for doctors, lawyers, therapists. I mean, Coaches, uh, there are all whatever. these sites where they're encouraging your client, your patient, uh, your customer to actually go online and rate you. And they're actually kind of creating incentives for people to do that, which creates a problem. I, I think especially in the world of the medical side of things, it's really kind of an, an unfair scenario because as a psychologist or a physician, your ability to respond is impossible because you, you're held by law to keep things confidential. Yes. So if someone goes and posts a negative thing about you, you can try to go through the, the site, you know, the, whoever owns that site or manages that site, but you can't actually post a rebuttal or defend yourself because you can't even acknowledge that this person was your patient or right. your client. Right. So it does create a problem. It's a little different than you know, the plumber who can, of course, go on there and correct the uh, situation simply by posting their side of the story. So, now, and we're going to show you some other ways to do things here because we're still in the assess area. So, you know, information, if you are state licensed, right? we want people to go and look at those sites, That's not right. just the Google results. Remember, the, your license is a piece of public information. Right. And, for example, here we're in Pennsylvania. It's the Bureau of Professional and Occupational Affairs. They every month post, uh, you know, information about anyone who has had any kind of license violation, whether it's something as minor as they 
they didn't get enough uh, continuing education credits that year, all the way up to people who have been uh, charged with a felony and had their license revoked and things like that. That's all out there on the web now. Uh, and it, it can leak out from those sites. I mean, you know, someone who's doing a little bit of background research can decide to post a blog and write up about, you know, did you hear about Dr. Samuels? I mean, we use a, a Dr. Samuels example. We do. Um, you know, so you gotta you got to go look not only at Google, but you have to now go look at these things because especially if you're a professional who's licensed, you know, people are being encouraged to go and check out your license history right on that site. So you want to find out what's there so that you're not getting an ugly surprise one day. And some of these things start out pretty innocently. We have a buddy named Jerry. I won't say anything further about Jerry, but Jerry, just on his Facebook profile the other day, writes about a bookstore that he went into, and it was at the closing time, and he asked somebody in the store a question, and the guy said, I'm sorry, sir, we're closing, and didn't answer the question. And so Jerry gets ticked off, and he writes in Facebook that, oh, what a great way to run this store. Well, those kinds of things start to add up. Well, you know, you, you just reminded me of a conference we went to, uh, you know, in Ocean City, Maryland, yes. and there was an example where there was a presenter, a very high-power high kind of guy, and he was a little ticked off at the, uh, the taxi service that was supposed to drive him. He was late uh, arriving for his presentation, and so he got up on stage, he pulled out his flip camera, and he recorded a negative ad. Diatribe? Say, a diatribe about this taxi service, and uh, I don't know if he followed through on his thread or not, but he said he was going to put that on his blog and, uh, you know, voice uh, his opinion that no one in their right mind should uh, call for this uh, taxi service or limit. So, yeah. this is what's happening on the internet. It's now so easy. Uh, we like some of these easy tools because they're great when we get into the you know kind of makeover and re and create your own legend side uh, it's about how you're going to take control of your online identity but everyone has access to the same s the same tools so it takes one angry client one angry family member of a client or a customer uh, who has an active one blog. former spouse uh, well that's been known to happen too yes so your you cannot really afford to be passive about your online reputation anymore and it, it, it has exploded an entire <coughs> new profession of online reputation management. So, you know, that's what we're talking about here. We are. And, you know, we want to make sure that you're looking at Google. We talk about Googling because it becomes the verb, and that's where sure. a lot of business things are done here. But as we point out here on this website, again, if you go to repairyourownlegendnow.com and you sign in there, you're going to be able to see all this information that we're talking about because uh, it's in the right-hand column in the yellow box. But we want you to go to Bing and Yahoo and YouTube. People often forget. People think that YouTube is just a video location. If you start to think of this as a giant database that is just filled with these things, you want to go search yourself. If you go search us, you're going to find, I don't know, a couple hundred videos, uh, you know, depending on when you, uh, uh, you, know, you actually search for us. Um, you, so you want to look at all these different places. Uh, ask Wikipedia. Is there something about you on Wikipedia? Right, sure. Yeah, that's you know, a good point. Those kinds of things. So we want to make sure that, that you're doing that. Uh, if you belong to a chamber of commerce or a better business bureau, what's on their site? Is there anything there where people can fill out a form to say good things about you? And maybe it's not as positive as you think it is. So all of this in assess. Now we've covered what we were calling here on the website, assess and probe deeper. Right. But you want to find out what's going on here. One of the things that you started talking about as well is how much of that information do you control? Exactly. If it's things that we've put out on our blog that are on there, because if you search Dr. Mark Kosman or you search Charlie Seymour Jr., you're going to see 10, 12 or more pages of Google results, search results on us on material that we control. Um, I'm friends with a, uh, he owns a car dealership. And I just wrote him recently, and I said, look at the first page. You're there three times talking about the cars that you sell. Everything else about you on that page is somebody else telling somebody to go find out about Ex you. Exactly, and that's what we're saying in the very beginning here, that you know, there's three main categories you could fall into when you do your assessment. You know, we've talked about the obvious, which is you find something negative. Well, if you find something negative, then you've got to take action right away. If you find nothing, uh, you're obviously working with a blank slate. So, you know, the bad news is nobody knows anything about you. The good news is that you get to now, you know, take that blank canvas and start creating your legend right from scratch. A lot of professionals, of course, are going to find neutral 
kind of information from these data aggregation sites that have really got your name, rank, and you might have your address, your professional information there. We don't want you to breathe a big sigh of relief when you yeah, see that because that's sure. not your content. It's about you, but none of that's under your control, as Charlie is saying, which means the minute, and they're also um, not sites that really have a, a strong linkage to you. Right. So the minute somebody with a powerful blog or someone who is you know, going to put things on a very active site, they're going to bump up right to page one with that negative information, and you have no defense at that point because you don't control those things. Again, if you go and search our sites, our names, you'll find that you know, we strive very hard to, to dominate 10 pages deep with content that we put there. It might be on other people's sites, but it's still our video, our blog post that we push out to all these other sites. There's no space for anyone else's commentary. It might temporarily blip up, but it's immediately going to get pushed back down again. And so. that's one of the problems when you go and find nothing. You say, oh, there's nothing there, and I've got you know, almost nothing about me. That really is something that you need to pay attention. That's one of the important things on Assess, because that means that someone who doesn't like you can easily go in and add something to you. Exactly. Now, I, I was saying a blank canvas. Imagine a blank white screen. A single smudgy thumbprint Ooh. is now very, very obvious on that blank Ooh. screen. You know, so right. exactly. You'd be better off having you know at least that neutral content in there to to sort of not make it a glaring, glowing you know piece of well, information. Well, here's but. here's a thing that you and I did before we were going to a conference. We did some videos. That's right. Where we announced to people that we thought they positive were great videos, people. Not negative very videos. positive. And they zoomed to the top of their results. Their name and anything to do with this conference became right at the top of page one on the search results. Well, let me really underline what Charlie just said because that's what's so important to understand here is that because we strive very hard to have a very active website, we have really good rankings and things like that. We've got a pretty powerful site, you know, to pat ourselves on the back. We were ranked number one above the actual sites for that person and for their conference that they were actively paying a lot of money to promote. So the point is, if we were active but negative bloggers Correct. and we're out to cause this person some trouble, the number one hit on page one was going to really do a lot of damage to this person's conference. That's right. It would have been ours. And of course, now we have that link that's out there. Let's assume now we came back and we made some modifications to where that link went. And we went down to the bottom. Oh, by the way, we went to the conference, we saw this person, and we really didn't like this person. Well, that's now at the top of their search results. So you really need to have a lot there on Assess. So, Dr. Mark, we did yeah, promise... We, we do have to wrap up this section, so I, I do see that we've gotten several questions. We do have, so a couple, we do have some questions in. here. So um, let, let, me, let me go with some. And I, why don't you just finish up what you want. I want to just copy a couple quick notes down from some of the questions that we have here. Well, in I'll the just Assess recap area. then. I mean, so the, you know, the point is... The most important thing for you to do is to do this emergency assessment, this immediate scan of the first few pages. Then you want to probe deeper, which involves going obviously deeper in those search pages, but also thinking farther outside a field and, as we said, going to professional sites where your, your license is being uh, monitored, going to other professional organizations that you belong to, uh, and even looking at other blogs where you have posted comments to look at the responses that people have been posting to your comments. Uh, a lot of times you have a little setting that when you post something on LinkedIn, let's say, or it's on someone's blog, you can you can follow that conversation. As much as we all have cluttered inboxes, you probably want to make sure that you're following any conversation that you've posted because the you know you never know. This has happened to me you know, any number of times. Someone can have a, a very strong reaction to something that you've posted on on a blog on on a LinkedIn group, and you want to kind of know that happens right away. And you'll get an email that gives you the, the digest of what's going on there, so you can go back and make sure that you're you know, answering those questions with the correct information. Absolutely. So, so what do you got, Charles? So before I go to these questions, and I've got two of them that I, I made some notes on, I want to remind everybody that you can go ahead and type in questions for us. We can't get to all of them during the webinar, but we will get to what we think those that will apply to most people. We will respond to everybody in writing afterwards. So we will as email you can. as quickly as we can get to it. So we will do that. And we want to remind you as well that we do have some pop-ups. Maybe you've seen one already um, that we have going on the pages with some special information that you can get, some downloadable things, um, some other more advanced information that you may want. So please keep watching the screen so that you can see this. Um, and again, at the end, we're going to have a free gift for you that has a value 
Over four hundred dollars worth yeah. of uh, free stuff. It's going to be free stuff we're going to give to you. That's all going to help with what we're talking about. Okay. So I made some notes, and rather than reading their questions specifically, right. um, here's here's give us the gist of it. Yeah, here's the gist of it. So because some of these, some of you write very well and you write very long things, but I didn't think I really had the time. Okay. So Sally from Houston wrote in, and she says she's a doctor, and she did a search on herself, showing her office information. Um, and it seemed that she's okay, but she really didn't find a great deal. We covered that a little bit. Right. We did she talk may have written that, that, but what would you respond? How would you respond to that? Well, again, I would say that you are, you know, momentarily okay. Uh, the good news is that you know you're you're not damaged by that information. It is sort of the uh, you want to make sure it's accurate first of all. Um, but we you're in that category where we would say you absolutely are not safe to breathe a big sigh of relief. None of that content is under your control. It's time for you to consider what you're going to do proactively to start creating your own legend now so that you can prevent ever having to repair your own legend now. So it is about what we'll talk about more in the makeover section when we talk about what you're actually going to start building to control those pages, but you want to start planning what you're going to do. So pat yourself on the back that nothing negative is there. You you obviously have not been the victim of somebody coming after you, but it's absolutely time to start thinking about what your proactive plan is to control at least the first three pages of search results. Right. Again, we're we would suggest to people three to ten, but that's a and long-term we'll show goal. How to do that. But your immediate goal. short-term goal is to you know for the for certainly your name and your business name, uh, you should be able to dominate those first few pages. And why do we say that? How often have you gone to page two and certainly to page three or page four right. or five? You, you don't do that generally when in the search results. We know that page one and page two are the most important. If someone is out to do you some damage they're going to go further out on that and That's keep right. looking to find information on you. But okay. there's not a lot of people that go beyond page 10, um, you know, so you're, that's why that's our long-term goal is for you to dominate that deep, Correct. but certainly those first few pages are critical. Right, okay. Now, Charles, who um, is a consultant from Washington, D.C., um, and he says... And we know there's no dirt flying around down in oh, that town. Oh, nothing, huh? nothing in Washington. Nothing could hurt no, you. No, no, right? it doesn't matter which part he's in, there's nothing ever going on in, D in D.C. But he said he has searched himself on Google and Bing, so he heard us not to just do right, Google. Not just one, it's yeah. good to, to do others. And he found something on page two. This is the reason that I selected this well, one. Okay, sorry, sorry for the joke about Washington, but it proves yeah. the uh, yeah. It, well, he didn't case. he didn't like something yeah. on it was right. page two on he, he didn't indicate to me whether it was Google or Bing, but it doesn't really matter. On page two, he found something that he really didn't like, and he said that he needs some professional help. Um, and what should I do now? How do I get rid of it? So that's really two questions. How do I get rid of it? Right. And what do I do now? Well, let's let's talk about getting rid of because it's yeah. a pet peeve of mine. I mean, you'll, mine you'll find people online uh, charging some pretty hefty fees, claiming that they are going to remove negative information about you off the internet. Well, I would love to know how they think they're going to do that. I mean, other than certainly you can approach a webmaster of somebody else's website and ask them politely to remove something, but you have absolutely no authority or control to do that. It is nearly impossible. And the other thing is, even if that person did say yes and they're going to remove it, I just double checked this. I, I forget the name of the site. You you told me uh, this URL. It's, on, it's one of these really deep archives. Yes. And I found a website that I put up, you know, ten years ago, literally ten years ago. The website doesn't exist. I don't own the domain, but I can go through this archive site and see everything I put on that website. So you can never remove anything. The internet is forever, folks, forever. But so. Dr. Mark, I get 404 pages telling me that that doesn't exist anymore. That's right. So how do I? What? What? What are you talking about? It, it doesn't exist on the original site. Correct. But it exists all over the internet in mirror sites, in index sites, in archives. I mean, there are people who have made it their mission to simply keep a real-time record of the entire World Wide Web from its from its inception. Uh, you know. S memory space has gotten cheaper and cheaper. I just, oh, yeah. you know, I think I told somebody the other day. I mean, I was walking through the checkout line, and you know, there's a little thing for four You're gigabytes, telling. and it was like twelve dollars or something like that. I mean, there yeah. are server farms full of uh, space. These guys are saving everything. So, okay, back to Charles here. Right. So um, you can't get rid of it, Charles. But your other part of the question what was, what now? should you do? Well, okay, so. Short of getting rid of things, you can, however, dominate search results by being a very active producer of content, and that's really what we're talking about here. Uh, and we'll talk about how you can do it. But you've already got something on page two. Now, by my definition, that puts you kind of in, I don't know how bad the thing you found is, but clearly right. you don't like it. 
So you're, you're in kind of the emergency category. So right off the bat, I would obviously say to come over to our site, repairyourownlegendnow.com. Right. Enter your name and email address that takes you to the inside page where you're getting you get to see all this information. You're getting all the information talking we're talking about now, but then enter your name, information, your phone number in the upper right hand corner of that inside page. That's our emergency kind of page. It sends your information only directly to us. It doesn't go to anyone else, but None directly our to our inbox. Uh, right. And we will contact you personally and get on it and talk to you about the the emergency kind of treatment that you can do. That goes beyond what we're covering today, though, so I'm going to leave it at that. And that's uh, for everybody. That's not just for Charles, obviously. Absolutely. If somebody feels if you, you really have something that you don't feel you can handle this by yourself, you've really got a problem, things are looking pretty bleak, you need some help, we want you to feel that you can go in there on the inside page once you've registered at repairyourownlegendnow.com then go ahead and you've got to put that information in again so that we know who, exactly who it is. And then we're going to ask for your phone number. We'll call you. We'll set up a time where we can chat more particularly. We may have a, some things just to give you. We may want to tweak something in your mind. You may need us to go do some things depending on where things go. Well, we're going so we to have to move that. along here, Charlie, because I we realize we're, we're only on the first of the four and uh, the clock is, is moving quickly. It is. It is. So let's move on to that second one now. And the second one is correct. Right. So now what are the steps? We've already assessed. What do we do now in the correct phase? You've got a thought or two on that. Well, I do. I've got to change screens here for a moment. But uh, Well, you know. you know, what are the topics we could write about? If people don't have a blog, should they start a blog? How do we go and correct some of this? You've already indicated we can't go and remove it. No, We're I mean, good, the but the you know, short Google answer laughs at all of us. If you want to say, could you please remove something, Mr. Google, it doesn't happen. I mean, the short answer here is that you want to start churning out as much content around your keywords, around your name, around your business name as you possibly can. Um, in this correct, you know, quantity is more important than quality, actually, in this emergency kind of phase. Obviously, we want quality, uh, but quality takes time to produce. Uh, you want to immediately start posting comments. You want to start, uh, you know, setting up your profiles on, on various places that are getting indexed. You need to get stuff out there, uh, and you can get help to do that, but the, the volume of content that you can get out there as quick as you can that's going to get indexed. Now, we're going to also throw out a keyword, and that is video. Uh, we obviously do a lot of video. We don't do that just because we love the camera and we enjoy doing it, which is true, but video is a very powerful tool to get you on to those domination kind of pages of, of the search results for a lot of reasons. I mean, video is very popular. Uh, Google owns YouTube, so we really recommend putting a lot of video out on YouTube with good descriptions in the little description box. Now, the reason, the other reason YouTube is a great place to go is that it's going to cost you nothing other than your effort. So shoot some quick videos. I mean, length doesn't matter of the video. I mean, it can be you know a 60-second video about a topic that's uh, re re relevant to your business or about you. Start building your legend. Start saying some important, positive things about you get testimonials from other people. Put it all out on YouTube and in that description box have links back to your website, good keywords in the tags and in the description itself so that you start getting that stuff indexed as quickly as possible. You'd be amazed how quickly it starts to get indexed, especially in a very popular active site like YouTube, right? That's, that's right, absolutely. And we've got a few tools, but we can talk to you about what some of those things are right now. One that we, we talk about is one camera, one take. Right. And that is literally just holding up a camera, talking into the camera, talking with somebody else, doing a little interview and back and forth, and no editing. And that sort of thing can go on that, your website, that's what go you on need. Facebook, it can start to get out there. So yes, we have techniques to show you how to do that and to make that really simple for you, but to get video out there, and I was just on LinkedIn back and forth in a whole conversation about well, you know, I've seen an awful lot of bad video. Video must be really difficult to do. No, video is not difficult to do, and it's very important to do. Would we rather have good lighting versus bad? Yes. Would you rather have good writing versus bad writing if you're writing an article? Yes. Right. You know, that sort and, of thing. And even more basic than that, I mean, I, yeah, we would definitely recommend you, you learn the one camera, one take technique and start doing that. Um, but if you're in that emergency mode where you need to just create content fast to get out there simply to move things off those pages, um, if you have PowerPoint, uh, or if you're a Mac person like we are and you have um, Keynote, Keynote, I mean, they both have the ability to record your actual presentation. So 
look at presentations. You probably already have a whole bunch of these from presentations that you've done in your professional career. If you've not, you know, put together four or five slides really quickly about a topic and use that record function. Guess what? You've got a video now. You can put that right up on YouTube. You're putting out useful information, some tips for people about your profession. If you're an accountant, putting out some tax advice. Um, if you're in a hurry, you can review other people's sites and do reviews of their blog posts. I mean, uh, you know, figuring out how to create some quick content is not difficult. Well, that's you right. got to do it. You and we've, see, we've seen people that will take a blog post that they've already done. They'll figure out what the sub-headlines are of that. That's what they'll put onto the video as they read the thing. Right. You can do a voiceover. And know. so simply a voiceover going on there. It's not a difficult thing to do. It may not be the most uh, awe-inspiring. We like things to be have a little bit more personality and really show who right. you are. But we'll get to that in the next right. section. We'll talk about that in the makeover. Now you, yeah. well, right now, you're just trying to correct, correct damage that you on. found. And so the key thing is figuring out how you're going to move things off those first three pages of the search results. And that, as I said, is much more about quantity than quality. Get as much quality right off the bat as you can, but move quickly. Find things that you've already got on your computer that you can record um, using, as I said, PowerPoint or Keynote. Or if you have some screen capture, things like Camtasia or we like ScreenFlow on the Mac, you can do almost anything. You can review your own website and, and do a voiceover and do that. Just get content out there. Uh, get other people to give you some testimonials, either on video or even if it's just text. That, again, you do as a PowerPoint showing those testimonials. You want to get your reputation going in the right direction, in the positive direction. But lots of little bits. Don't try to do it all in one piece because that just counts as one thing. You want to churn out a whole bunch of little tiny bits because those all become separate little posts all over the internet. Then. Think of it as real estate. Think of it as the monopoly game. You wanted to own all the properties along that block. Well, once you own all those properties along that block, there's nobody else who can come and own those properties. That's right. So when you fill up those pages, again, if you go search our names and you see that we already control all that, the only place for somebody else to go is way at the end unless they've got kind of the currency and the relevancy that we have. Because currency, and I don't just mean money, I mean being, being current, current yes. goes has more power than something that's older. So, you, and and or that has authority. So you can have a professor say something, and he said it four years ago. You can say something recently and put a little video out, and, and you you're win. going to be above that person in the search results. Right. So it's important to understand how they're done and what they're doing. So I've got a couple questions here already that I've jotted down as we're moving yeah, ahead let's, here. Let's go there. With, with we've got okay? to keep ourselves on schedule. Yes, we'd, we don't want to tie you up the whole night, but we do know the whole day, I mean. But we do want to give enough information here so that you can actually go do this. Because that's what we're trying to do here in repairyourownlegendnow.com. We're giving you this information. We want you to go do that. Sure, if you find you need something else to, to be done for you, if you need some more expertise in what you have, yes, we hope you're going to think of us because we've given you such great information. But you can do most of this. So here comes Absolutely. a question. Yep. Francis is a life coach in Albuquerque. Okay. And she understood us in the correct, uh, but what's the number one thing she should do to start? And I think you just well, did, and we did a fair amount of this. But the number one, the number one thing to start thinking, you know, to start her in her correct area. I, I got to go with video in I that department too. again because you know, in our experience, it is getting indexed faster than anything. We put everything out in multimedia essentially, so we are all about video, text, you know, video, print, and audio. I mean, right. we we do them all, but that's why we can watch the results. The thing that zooms to the top of the indexing is video every time. Google, in particular appears to be really reserving about 30% of each page to put video content. Now, it doesn't mean that there's video on every one. In fact, you know, a lot of them don't, but that right. means that no one's putting out video on those keywords. Good opportunity for you. And that's why it's such a big opportunity for you if you're finding uh, problematic information and there's not a lot of video. Well, that's virgin territory for you to go and create a bunch of videos. You're if you're putting out three videos on your keywords right off the bat, you're almost guaranteed to end up on page one fairly quickly because Google wants three videos on every page. Well, and the next thing that's important on that is, is that when people come to a page of results from Google and they see some videos on it, what do you think they click on first no matter what position it's that's in? That's right. It's much more visually appealing. We all are conditioned by watching television to, to passively take in information rather than having to work our eyeballs and actually read the words. So you're, you're visually, even if you're in the middle of the page and the negative information is at the top of the page, 
Yeah, people are going to see it, but the thing is, video is more compelling. That's why it is important to get to that one camera, one take kind of thing more so as quickly as you can over the PowerPoint kind of things because people want to be able to look in your eyes. They want to see your sincerity. Uh, the best rebuttal you can give is looking right at the camera and saying, this is who I really am. You may have heard some things about me. Uh, you, you know, you see this during political campaigns. So, you know, there's a lot of negative stuff that gets put out there. And at times you have to look straight in that camera and say, look, this is who I am. You know, you can listen to what people are saying about me, but I'm going to show you who I am. You can look at my eyes. You can look at my body language. You can judge for yourself my sincerity. Uh, but that has a lot of power when you speak up for yourself in a positive way. And that just emphasizes again to all these negative political ads that we have and why. Well, why sure. can't they please just focus on a, a topic that's important to me and give me the positive? Well, the reason they don't is because the negative sells so well. Absolutely. The same thing here. So when someone's saying negative. Now, Fran Francis, right, it's Francis. We will get back to you and let you know a little bit more in our next section of what you might put in some of these videos. Right. That we do some makeover. Let's go to one other that I got from Robert from Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, I'm not sure he says exactly what he was doing here, but that's okay. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Um, what is the most effective way of using social media to correct online identity problems? Well, the beautiful thing about social media, again, is that these are free channels that didn't exist even a few years ago right. that allow you to immediately hop on, you know, make sure you create profiles on all of these things. So create a profile on, twi on Twitter, create a profile on Facebook, and if you're a business, create both a profile and a page for your business. Um, they're just so easy to use and start putting content out. Now, they don't, those don't necessarily get indexed a, a ton, uh, but it is a place where when people do actively search for you, they're going to find your profile at least and be able to and make those open profiles. Don't you know? T uh, again, if you were creating a Facebook profile to, to just communicate with your family, you might want all those pro all those uh, privacy settings. But in this context of how are you going to repair things quickly, how are you going to correct things quickly, you want to open the doors as wide as possible so that they do get indexed. Create a LinkedIn group and make that open. Um, you you know create a meetup group and uh, that's a site that but you know get, gets very com. very active. Create a meetup group about a topic. So go and find as many of these social media uh, um, outlets as you can. Google itself, create a Google profile if you haven't done that. It allows you to, you know, that generally pops up on page one when someone searches your name. Right. Because it's Google, let's face it. So you can put all kinds of important positive information about yourself on all of these profiles and then start putting out content. And the nice thing about them is that you can now interlink all these things, right? We'll put out a video on YouTube and it automatically, you can use these little share things on the dashboards of these things. So I put a video out there, a few minutes later it is already on my Facebook profile, it already goes out through the Twitter channel that uh, you know, we used Charlie's Twitter and my Facebook and then we interlink them all. So you can create one bit of content that suddenly is just getting propagated throughout this network. Absolutely, that's very very important for you to do um, to keep things moving and so many people that when they come to us we go and we see, that. well, I've already got Facebook, and I've already got this, and I've got that. And then we right. go and we see that there's no photograph on it. Right. There's no real description of what they're doing. Make it you know, warm and personal and, and show your nice personality. And that nice smile. I think it was Twitter where they say that, that was 70-some percent of people agree to friend with somebody. They may use a slightly different term yeah, there. Picture if smile. they have a smile. Right. So, you know, you want to look happy. You want to look inviting. You're there scowling or have no picture or it's a picture of your dog. Oh, and the worst thing is that little you know, head silhouette with a question mark. I mean, come on. Yeah. It, upload, get a nice picture. If you, you know, it doesn't even have to be a professional headshot, although that's not a bad idea if you're trying to build your, your reputation. We don't want it to be you know, one of these stiff, and being a professional photographer myself, one of these stiff pictures and it has that mottled background behind you and you look, no. Right. Be a human being and open up to other people. That's it's right. real important. You say, well, I don't, know that media, I, you know. that I, I don't know that I want to share all that with people. Well, that's what the other guy's doing when he's coming after you. That's what your competition is doing. You need to share that, of course, on video. Now, personally, as a photographer, I would, you know, I'd like to darken and look like I have some hair and make sure everything <laughs> here is nice and dark. Well, no, just come and show who you are. That's what people are looking for. So. And again, remember, we're talking about correct here. So if someone is posting something negative about you, the best thing, you're not actually actively rebutting that person's comment. You're proving them wrong by showing who you really are. Right. You're, you're building a body of evidence that says, no, 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 that, that's one person's opinion about me, and here are 28 different sites that are showing my personality, my warmth, 
the fact that you do want to do business cultivate those testimonials especially in business get your LinkedIn profile up there you know connect to your your friends and colleagues get them to write re recommendations for you right, right on your LinkedIn profile so that people are able to make up their own mind and they're gonna see okay this is one crackpot saying this nasty stuff about you and here's all this nice stuff saying about you well you know yes unfortunately the psychology is that the negative is much more visible immediately to our minds than the positive but you you want a hundred positive things to every negative that could possibly be there absolutely right and it was Shakespeare I think who said methinks he doth protest too much so right. we, you don't need to stand there and say, "Wait a minute, I'm really a good guy," and I would never. No, well, just by showing. We, I mean, we just did a, a, a an article did. about that in a, in a video. We just shot that video about the the fact that people can get into a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble, going toe to toe with that person that has criticized them. You just don't want to go there. You want to take the high ground. You might post a, a rebuttal that is just a very neutral statement of facts, and then you want to move on. Uh, you want, you know, the, the, it's kind of like a, I did a lot of martial arts uh, back in the day, and, and one of the things you learn in martial arts is to redirect people's energy. So if someone's attacking you rather than fighting back toe to toe, you can move out of the way and move their energy so that they go bouncing off the wall. Well, you can do the same thing online. You want to be the rational, calm, sane voice next to the one that is just kind of foaming at the mouth and angry. People can see that distinction. So if you get just as angry as they do, well, you know, there's an awful lot of examples of that online, uh, and this, that's what our article was about. You can find it on our website. Um, you don't want to go there because now you're participating in creating that, uh, that destroying, that negative image of you online. Well, and before we move on, Dr. Marcos, we do need to move on to, to move make on. over. Um, isn't it interesting how on our blogs, we have videos on all of our blogs. That's right. We've got the text so that people can read it and Google can read it because they can't get inside those videos to read them. And often we'll have a podcast right. as well exactly. so that we're mixing all this. And then we happen to turn to our assistant because we're busy doing things like this uh, so we can't spend all that time ourselves. We'll tell you how to do that as well. But we have those go out as three separate things. There's a blog post that goes out right. that comes back to that same place. Right. We have a video that comes back there and an audio. So that you don't, that's repurposing the same bit of information and using it three times and it's taking up three slots right there. And, so, nice. and sometimes more because remember that with this explosion of blogs and sites on the, on the web, people are hungry for content. I mean, they've got to put things out. They are more than happy to use your content if you build an account, and that's part of what we do. We'll shoot one video, but that one video might go out to 50 different blog sites, and some of those get indexed by the search engines as completely separate things. Yeah, so you know you can then do a search on that keyword, and the same video might be on that page three times on different places. Now you might think, places. well, geez, does that make me look bad? The same videos? No, no. You've crowded out the competition. The person's obviously going to see the same image. They're only going to watch the one but you are dominating the territory. You're owning the real estate. And well, that's and of course, so you and I love to be able to go to some of the English sites and see that we've got 20 of our videos on some of these and sites. some of the Japanese sites. The Japanese <laughs> sites, uh, Indonesia, <laughs> wherever it turns out to be around the world, people are picking up our videos. It counts. That's what's really it important. Counts. Let's move on, yeah, to move on to Makeover. Yeah, we've got to move on to This is the okay. fun part. This is the part we love the most. Well, and this is where... Doesn't everyone like a good Makeover? We Come do, on. yes, yes. Um, and it's where we spend most of our time. We got into the whole repair area, as I said, I think, earlier on in, in this uh, information, because there was a need from some of our sure. clients. Right. It happens. We know that, for me personally, uh, some time ago, there was somebody who didn't do work that he was supposed to do for me. Right. Um, I had to say, I can't pay you because you didn't do that. He started saying nasty things. He threatened to come after me. I know where you live, kinds of th statements. Yeah. So we, I learned, before we became business partners, I learned that I had to take care of it and how to take care of it. We now have all that background and all the work that we've been doing really to take care of that repair. So let's assume now that you've done the assess, right. you've done your assessment, you've done um, the correct, the correcting of so anything we're negative. getting things really, now let's talk about how to get out the information about you that you really want people to see. Now I caution you that there are some people out there, um, maybe there's scrupulous, maybe they're not, but they're just putting a lot of crap out there about yeah. you on your name if you go to them and get them to help you. So you want to be careful about that because somebody's going to come across that and if it all is just one of these manufactured things and you go and the, and the sentences don't make sense and it's just all about you, 
you want to make sure now what information do you want people to come. So let's talk about that in that makeover. That's right. How do we make sure that the people that we're talking about and talking to here really have a good profile online? That's right, because the majority of people are hopefully going to start right here with the makeover because they're going to do that assessment. And as I said, we have those three categories. Either there's something negative, in which case you have to go into that correct mode, but if you assess and you either have not much about you or just some of this neutral information that you don't control, well, now you're going to go right to the makeover part because you know you're you're in you got to step ahead here now. You don't have to correct anything or fix anything. You get to work at figuring out how am I going to put my information out there now. Now I'm going to reverse the formula. Incorrect. I was saying you want quantity over quality. I mean, you need to get a ton of quantity out there to push that stuff away. Well, if you've already done that or you don't need to do that, now it's all about quality. You want quality and you do want quantity, but you want quality uh, information that you're starting to create, create. You're going to create a plan of who are you? You know, Who do you want to be known as when people do search about you? What are the key words that you are needing people to search in order to find you? And you're going to start building content around those keywords and around certainly your name and your business name, but other important words that, you know, if you have different kinds of product lines, those are all things that you're going to build content around. And when I say content, Again, we're talking video, audio, and print are, are the main uh, you know, media outputs. And to keep it simple, think of it this way, uh, you know, your print is going on a blog, your audio is going on a podcast, and your video is going on, well, video, it's going on your YouTube channel, and of course you're combining them all on your site. And so we recommend that people absolutely begin with a blog site, which for our way of thinking is really an information management kind of uh, kind of site. It's it, the, the it sun is. in your system, right? Yeah. So we realize that between the two of us, we have it a little easier than you may have it. We have the psychologist who kind of goes in and analyzes how are people seeing things and what are they thinking about, and we have the marketing crazed MBA who then also is um, a guy who's dealt a lot with the internet, but also with theater and storytelling and being on the stage and comfortable in front of the camera. So we've got several things that we've got on some of our sites. We'll get to some of that also a, a bit later. But we want you to start publishing posts on your website about you. That's and right. the thing that we have that's easier is we can understand that we can tell a story that really goes out and grabs the heart of people. I think a lot of people in your position may say, well, I don't want to brag about myself. Well, I don't want this about myself. I don't want to. But we're here to encourage you to tell that story the way it needs to be told. Right. It's not bragging. I mean, it's, it's really stating your history. I mean, and we call it a legend. Right. Create your legend. I mean, you do this every time you write a, a resume or a curriculum vitae. I mean, you, you're going to sit down and you're going to describe your accomplishments and awards that you've won and uh, things that you've been recognized for. But you're also really just, a, it's really just about showing your expertise. So, I mean, the content is generally going to, you know, if you're an accountant and you have a specialty, you're going to create content about those things. You're going to create information and advice and help for your, your customers and clients. If you're a physician and there are certain things that you're having to teach your patients over and over again, well, you're going to create some content around there. You're going to write about it. You're going to write blogs about it. You're going to record these short little videos that are, are you know, kind of creating interest to go and, and read that. And we like to use audio as, as the, a great tool for longer content because, let's face it, it's easy to do. It requires far less editing. And so if you think about it that way, I like to think of the written word as my medium length content, the audio podcasting kind of stuff for my longer content, and the video as the, the commercial, the attention grabber, and also obviously the internet you know, index uh, magic. Well, and let's face it, for a video such as a longer one that we're doing at the moment here as well, here on, on, on being on camera and being on a webinar, uh, you have to stay glued to your computer to be able to see what we're talking about. Now, of course, you know that you wanted to stay there too for all those free things that we're giving away and some of those other uh, more advanced things that have been popping up as we've been talking here. So we know that, that you're staying glued to, uh, uh, to your computer for that. 
but the longer one that we like to do in that podcast you can take with you. People are used to an iPod now. They know how to load these iPods. Right. You can listen to it in your car yeah. or when you're on put the treadmill. Put it on a CD or put it on an iPod and take it. The treadmill, you're out somewhere. I mean, e- Even though there are all these uh, wonderful mobile devices now, uh, you know, we really don't want you to be watching our videos while no. driving down the road. Please don't. Uh, you, you probably can physically do that mm, now. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because we want you still driving down listen, the road. Listen. Yeah, just listen. listen. Yeah, there's, some, there's a lot of good stuff. And I personally don't turn the radio on anymore in my car. I, University on wheels is what Zig Ziglar called it. And I really think that that's what it is. So that we get a lot of great information of what we're doing here. Well, but let's get real specific. I mean, yes, so, let's do it. You know, you want to go and uh, do some keyword research. I mean, you can go to Google's, and, and if you Google Google keyword tool, it'll take you right to a really cool little thing. Uh, some of the keywords you don't even need to research, that you already know that you need to uh, work at dominating those. As we said, your name, your business name, uh, any particular product lines that you have. But you want to pick three or four, you know, b- build a list of the key keywords, the things that are most important to you, and you're going to write some blog posts about that or put some articles out that you can put out on e-zines and things like that that really want your content. But think of uh, making this list of the keywords that you... Are, are, that are people are going to use to search for you, and you're going to write two or three articles about each of those key words. Do two or three quick videos that go along with those. Again, I say quick because it doesn't have to be long. It just has to be useful, attention-getting information uh, because it's going to get linked to those keywords now. It's going to get indexed together, and you're going to start to own the real estate of those first several pages, right? Absolutely. Now, you'll see on the inside page, once you've gone into repairyourownlegendnow.com, you'll see that we've listed 10 things here under Makeover. And I'm just going to select a couple of them because Dr. Mark has covered some of these already. And we want to get to a couple of questions as and well. And we want to get so. to the questions. I've already got two questions down here. So uh, we're glad to see that the questions are coming. Please continue with your questions. We will get back to you in writing um, by email if we can't answer we're, right we're now. We're going to be busy because there's quite, quite a few coming there, in there, here. There so. are, and that's very exciting. So keywords all the time. What are people already searching on? How do I find keywords? You've already been told how to do that. But the other thing is to go to Google and put in some words just to say, you know, what do I see? Or YouTube. Think think like your customer. Think like your client. What are the things that they are going to enter into that, you know, that search window in order to get to you? And once you know those, that's what you need to dominate. So. So we want you to use those keywords. We want you to publish on your blog. We want you to get comfortable on camera. We've already talked about that. We're going to show you some ways that you can see a lot of our videos um, for free so that you can see how to become comfortable. And, and we hope you've been paying attention to the pop-ups that may be popping up here during the course of this webinar Absolutely. because uh, you might just find some relevant things you about these You just things. might. You never know how creative we are on things that we want to make sure that you're, you're aware of. And the audio recordings short videos to introduce and setting up your YouTube channel. Now, it's real important. YouTube is going to be, we do a lot of syndication. Now, sometimes people don't understand what that word is, but just getting information out through other people. Mm-hmm. Um, YouTube does a lot just by itself, even without our even doing anything. Sure. So we're often surprised when we say, okay, put the video up now, but we're not going to release the blog post because we, we've got blog posts several days in advance, sometimes a couple weeks in advance on general blog posts, and videos are already included, but we had to put them onto YouTube first. Well, sometimes we find ourselves with well, that video is already out there in right. the world. We say, well, we haven't released it. They're pretty well, quick. Well, video goes out pretty quickly when, when they're doing it right there through, uh, through YouTube. So we want to make sure you're doing that. And then we always want you to think what that energy flow is with the Internet so that you're always leading people back to your own website so it's information you're controlling so that when you're building up what that image should be on there, we're going to do it. Let's yeah, get to and a and question. I think that goes back to, to Francis's question before yes. about the social media. Once you learn how to string these things together, I was saying, for let's just take the example of YouTube. When you go to YouTube and you set up your account, in the account section, there's a share function right there. They make it very easy. You can link it right to your Facebook profile. You can link it right to your Twitter and there's two or three others in there. So, so when we say linking, that means you put the video up there and it automatically puts automatically. a note over there. Without any extra effort, you're just pushing a button and there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> okay, so let's get to a question from Nancy from Westchester who wonders here with her small business blog that she's writing a couple times weekly, um, what can she do to get the most attention uh, and more traction out of that? 
Uh, well, I, I'm going to go with video again. I mean, uh, not to sound like a broken record. And combining record. putting audio with it. Yeah, I mean, you want to make it multimodal. I mean, so if you're going text only, uh, again, it's not as attention getting. If if you do a search on any keyword. And you're just kind of looking at that results. You know, it used to be that the goal was to be in those number one, number two, number three slots, that that was most important. I think at this point it's pretty safe to say that even if you're down lower on the page, if you've got that video box, it's what we're conditioned to. And it's, yes. it, you know right off the bat it's going to be more media rich. You might bypass the number one Google slot now and go with that just because you're going to have a more enjoyable viewing experience. So. Look at our website, you know, and look at how our blog is set up. You'll always see that combination, certainly of video with text. We, we really hate to put any text up that doesn't have an associated video. can be, again, a 30 to 60 second little, hey, I just did this great article. Take a look at it. It's right down below here. Go ahead and read it. You've already engaged me more than just reading the headline and making me work. So. Exactly. And use some personality in what we're doing here. Let's go to Randy, the accountant, who says, okay, so the two of us use video an awful lot. And that is true. We use video an awful lot. He says that he sees, I think his word was crummy. That's what I wrote down here. <laughs> he sees a lot of crummy videos uh, coming out of YouTube, um, and he's not sure that he's comfortable on camera. How can he use video better to produce the results? Well, that's a good point, and, and we did actually produce a whole product about that, which we call Video Power Introductions. Yes. And uh, you'll, you can find that on our website, and you know maybe there's a pop-up somewhere around here, too. Oh, I'm not going to get away. We're not here to push that, but, but the strategy that we show in there, which you can just very easily follow is to understand that we introduce ourselves all the time you know uh, you do it at a barbecue you do it at a cocktail party you do it at you know around the holidays you meet somebody for the first time hey what do you do and you you answer that question in a very relaxed conversational kind of way that's what you want to start to kind of build into what you're doing so that you can start to get comfortable on camera. Now, the other thing that's wonderful about camera, we talk about all the time, digital, is that it's ones and zeros and it's free. There's no videotape. There's no Super 8 film that you had to pay money to go Roll get. Throw it away if it's no good. So, you know, the camera is actually your, your best friend to get, get comfortable on camera is that you set up the camera on a tripod. You sit here and you speak to it. Then you take a break grab a cup of coffee, play back what you just did, and, you know, relax. Give yourself a very objective critique and say, ah, oh, you know, I didn't notice that I was saying, you know, you know, you know, you know, ten times. So you monitor what you're doing and you correct it yourself, and now you go and you do it again. You can do endless numbers of takes. That's why we love video so much. Exactly. I mean, we are often perfect on the first take, of course. Of course. But at least it's the first take that we show. If we weren't, exactly. You wouldn't know that because it might have been the 20th take that we did. And, right. And it's the first time you're seeing that information because I deleted all those other ones. So exactly. use the camera as your best friend to get comfortable on camera. Now, we have a whole site that we're going to send you to when we finish this that's going to help you here with the makeover, but we're going to get into monitor. Right. we got to get uh, there because the clock is – I'm looking at the monitor of the clock, and we have to move, uh, move along here. So. Yes, we do. So with monitor, what we want to make sure here is that nobody can come and do anything to us again. So part of the problem that things have built up or there's negative things that are out there is because we just haven't been watching, we haven't been observing, we haven't seen what's gone on. So we want to make sure that there's a monitoring system in place. So what have we done? We've assessed. We've already taken a look to see what's right. out there, right? Then we went on and we did corrective movements to get rid of the stuff oh, by you pushing can. it yeah. down, right? We've done the makeover, which again is our largest area. Where you're going to spend the most time there because you're going to continue to create things all the time because you want to be current. You want your most... Re I went to a site where I really liked this guy and I was telling you about this guy that I thought was doing some great information and so I downloaded his PDF and I was so excited about it I went to read it and he's talking about 43 million people on uh, on Facebook. Right. And a, little, I thought, a little old now that we're over this, 500 million. Right? Hasn't this guy updated this stuff in years? And he's a He's got lots of things. That did he's did done. we mention before that the internet is forever? It is uh, forever. There are things that are there that are no longer exactly. alive and running, but exactly. they're still there. So we want to go to monitor, and the first thing we're going to tell people to do, of course, is to set up Google Alerts. Right. I mean, Google is uh, is your friend in many ways, even if it's indexing the things that got you into trouble in the first place. But it is your friend if you play by its rules, which is. Uh, but they have all these great tools, and Google yes. Alerts are so easy. Just go to Google uh, into your your Google account. And you 
Uh, if you go to Google, there's a little thing to the right that says more, and if it's not right in there, there's a little drop down that says even more, and you get the full panel of all the f all the free little wonderful tools that Google has, and one of them is Google Alerts. And really, all you're doing is entering keywords, and uh, you're choosing an interval so you can ha you can have uh, Google send you an email every single day if you want around a, a keyword, or you can set it for once a week, or you can set it for once a month. And so you choose the interval. And what it's essentially doing is, as Google is sending out its little spiders and crawlers and indexing the web, every time it finds the phrase that you have put an alert in, it adds it to a little digest, and then once a day, if that's what you've set it. So for example, we of course have them set up on our own names so that we monitor it. We right. highly Other recommend keywords. that you do that. Yep. So your name, your business name. Um, and so every day, Google tells you whether or not someone is, is chatting about you. Now, you do that for two different reasons. Uh, it's If you think about it, you can say it's the assess side and it's the makeover side at the same time. You want to be monitoring for any potential negative content that has popped up that someone else has posted, and hopefully that's rare or hopefully it never happens to you, but you want to know it as quickly as possible because you can nip a problem in the bud rather than letting it escalate and go viral and, and cause trouble for you. But you also want to be monitoring your own content. That's the main reason that we actually have our own uh, you know, uh, Google Alerts out there, is that we want to make sure that our syndication systems are doing their job. So you, know, you put something out there, and you watch it get indexed, and pops back, and you're like, ah, there you go. Google's doing its job. Google found me. They found my latest blog post. They found my latest uh, uh, video that I put out. And it's doing that. And so the, I'll throw in even a third reason, because you know, we're talking about creating all this content under Makeover, and a lot of people often say to us, my gosh, how am I going to come up with enough content to write about every oh, week yeah. on my blog post? Well, you set up a Google alert on the key topics that you want to create content about. Google sends you this nice digest of everything that's been written about that. You read through that, and you put in your expertise on that. We're not talking about just churning out what's already been said. You post a rebuttal. You disagree. You have an argument with an author. You say, no, well, you know, so-and-so wrote such-and-such -such on their blog. I think in my professional experience, I, I look at it a little bit differently. Here are my three points that I want to get across here. Your content is being, your research is being done for you by Google. It's terrific. It is. And we want you to go to Google itself and to search for you because the, the Google alerts are primarily, not just totally, but primarily doing things that have happened recently. Right. So new the things are going on. Right. So there are things that sometimes will push down on your site and others will get into your site that have been out there for a while and all of a sudden we're not exactly sure why they're there. So you want to actually go put in your information, your keywords, um, your own name, your company's name, your practice's name, whatever it is, right into Google to see what's going on. We want you to do that at least monthly. Right. Okay. Absolutely. And also, you know, one of the fun things we have found too for uh, Google Alerts, if you have particular clients that you really want to keep tabs on, right. you want to put an alert on that person. Maybe you want to uh, send a congratulatory note that something just happened. They just uh, received a promotion or something just happened in Talk about looking good for your, your highest uh, client to be monitoring them. And, and the minute they've got something, you, you're immediately... I mean, how, how good is that going to make that person feel? How, how impressed are they going to be that you're paying that much attention to their career? Wow, you know, how did you do that? Well, Google did it for you, but they don't have to know that. I, n I know back when I was um, I headed up all the marketing for a large real estate firm in the Philadelphia area, we used to have a, what was called then a clipping service. And there were certain newspapers and magazines, and you had to pay to have them searching those, and then how many clips they would give you. Well, Google now does all this stuff for free so that you can find out what's going on about you, what's going on about all the people that you care about, so that you can stay up on that. And your competitors. What are your competitors? So only the people you want to impress. What else are they doing so that you know? Sure. You don't want to find out six months down the road that they just announced something and they're No, stay in touch with it. So that's why this is really important in the monitoring. It's not simply what you're doing. because all you know, It's not just the negative things that are out there as well for us. We want to know what's going on in other people's businesses so Absolutely. we can keep ours really going. So you need to monitor that whole landscape that's out there. That's right. So you're monitoring for any you know, warning signs of something negative happening. Uh, you're monitoring to make sure your positive content that you're generating is doing its job and getting out there. You're monitoring to collect information that you're going to create content about. And you're monitoring to do market research or, or competitor research or client research so that you can use that to, uh, you know, again, do a different kind of marketing. And we indicate right here, again, this is on the inside page from 
repairyourownlegendnow.com so that once you've logged in there you're then going to be taken to this page and one of the things here that, that we talk about is if you fall below um, 80 percent of the coverage on page one for your particular keyword terms you want to start increasing some more of your activity and putting out good information about That's yourself right. and especially again we've said it a number of times but you know make sure that you are incorporating video uh, if you're not comfortable on camera, I would say get comfortable on camera, but even if you're not, then create content in other ways with screen grabs or PowerPoints, but that video will allow you to push that results back up into that, over that 80% because it is such a powerful way to get noticed. Now, Dr. Mark, we promised people that we would keep them under uh, an hour and 15 minutes here, and we, so we we're, do need we're to coming close. close so to wrapping up let me here, take so. a couple questions that I've got here already. I've jotted a couple notes down on approximately, again, what they're saying here. So Stacy, who's a marketing professional from Newton, says, uh, what should I monitor about my business? Well, okay. what's important to you, Stacy? What is it that you really want to know? What are people saying about you? And again, what are your important clients saying about you? So monitor what your own name, your own business name, and these other clients, and that's going to go a long way to what's happening in, in, in your business. Absolutely. Plus, make sure that if you have a blog, the e, which you have, right? You, you have a blog. You right? have a blog That's by right. the time we do all this. You, you created it in the makeover section, as yes, I recall. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, yes, you did. So what you want to make sure is, are those getting out there? Are they being seen? Do you find them in search results if you put in some of the keywords from there? If not, you want to fine-tune what's going on there in those so that they are getting out to where you need them to get out. That's right. I mean, this monitoring is kind of like... You know, you go to the doctor and they take your vitals, you know, they take your temperature, they take your blood pressure, they might do an EKG. Uh, this is the EKG for your business. I mean, so you're going to, anything that's important, anything that uh, could either be harmed by negative content or could be enhanced by positive content, you want to be monitoring. I mean, you can always trim back. So I would say go crazy setting up your Google Alerts. I mean, set up a zillion of them. Set them up in, in right. entire phrases. Uh, you know, if there are certain, you know, shorter real you know key words literally then then monitor those if you're getting inundated and you're finding that it's really not doing its job then go back in delete those tweak it I mean it's free for for heaven's sake so uh, you want to use it and find what you can monitor but you want to monitor as many things as you can because remember you've got all these different purposes you're monitoring to keep yourself safe you're monitoring to get your content out there you're monitoring to collect information to create your content in the first place all of that Great stuff can be done through this monitoring. Well, and leave it to the psychologist to, st to use a, a medical analogy here, but that's really what it is. It is. So if you have a cholesterol problem, what are, you, what are you monitoring? Probably not just your hearing, right? You're monitoring to make sure your you're blood cholesterol. and what's going on with your cholesterol and that sort of thing. So make sure that you're tailoring what you're doing there. Once you start to think about it, and again, the Google Alerts are absolutely free. So it, you know, set up as many as you want. If you start to get too many of them, then don't have them arrive quite as quickly. Don't put them off too much because you want to know when things are changing, That's but right. make sure that you have them on anything that could be uh, related to you that would make some sense. Let me go with one other question sure. that I have here. Okay, This is from John. I think he said he's, he's an attorney, and it looks like it's a small practice. Maybe there are only two partners in here. Okay, uh, It sounds like a lot of work, Okay, and I need some help. Uh, do you two offer any direct help? Oh, I see. So it really is. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the good we news. We do and we don't. But the, go ahead. The, the good news, John, is that if you don't do all these things, yes, they are a lot of work. If you don't, you'll, you'll have a lot of free time yes. in order to do them later. Yes, so. because those, those, and we see it, and the example that we use on Repair Your Own Legend now, and we had to change his name right, because. Dr. Samuels. Daniel I mean, Samuels. We, we, we don't want to when, publicize problems that are going on with somebody, so we had to change his name. When suddenly you have no referrals and, and things dry up. So, sure, it's a lot of work, but um, you're really incorporating all of this into what you're already doing. I mean, um, and we talk about the, that in our book and in other ways, that the really, what you're trying to do is capture and package things that you're already doing as much as you can and then repurposing them to get them out there. Monitoring, sure. It, uh, you know, it takes some time to sit down and look through all these things, but you know what? There are ways to you know, either get a personal assistant if you don't have one, and, and it's uh, something that we use all the time. We Absolutely. Have, we have John. John, we have John, different John, uh, who does a lot of work uh, with us and for us. And so it is something that you can delegate uh, and have somebody else do once, uh, you know, once a day for the critical stuff and once a week, but it doesn't take a ton of time to do the monitoring part. Um, 
Does it take a lot of time to create content? Sure it does, but again, you can outsource parts of it, and we can talk uh, more about that, uh, and, and you'll find much more information about that on our website. Um, but you got to do it, because it, it really is marketing in the modern world. It, it is definitely a complaint that is coming up a fair amount, as everything has mushroomed into this world of social media. You know, you do have to invest time in it, but it's an investment, and there is a return on that investment that you can measure. So, you know... Absolutely. So it's an important thing for you to be doing. Um, and really, the online profile is the new currency. Absolutely. So unless you want your currency to be shut off, if you want your dollars to be shut down, then don't worry about what's going on online. You've got to be able to figure out how to, to, to do this. We, so We recently were looking at the results of a Harris poll, and you know, 78% of the people... Uh, said that they would research, uh, you know, someone before they did business with them. But more importantly, 74%, if I remember my number right, uh, said they would not do business with someone if they found that mm -hmm. negative content about them. So you you really, right. if you're willing to try to live with the 20, 26% of the people who are not going to look, uh, that's just not enough to pay the bills. So you yep. got to do this. Well, let, let's talk for just a couple minutes here on some of the free information that we want people to build again. Right, because we did promise we would wrap up, and we are at we're, a, an we're, hour and ten minutes here. We're, so we're we getting in there. Here. So we, we've already indicated to you about the repairyourownlegendnow.com. And where we give you the information we've already given you, we give you more of that. We give you uh, an e-course that goes over week after week of more in-depth information on what we've been talking about here. We've got another site that we want you to sign up for because it's that place where you're going to start doing that whole makeover, whole makeover. what we call createyourownlegendnow.com, and that's the site we want you to go to, right. createyourownlegendnow.com. Yeah. Just register in the upper right-hand corner. You'll get on our mailing list. We, we give away a ton of free content. We give away as much as we can without putting ourselves out of business, but uh, we do enjoy what we do and we enjoy these topics, and so we put out a ton of stuff in podcasts and in blog posts and And video. we show yeah. you how to do the videos and the sort of things that are there. There's also um, the free gift that you're going to be able to see on that site. We've got an awful lot of things, some entry level, some more advanced, and some very advanced things that you can learn how to do. Some of it is free, some of it is you're going more advanced would not be. but. Why video is vital to a professional. Right, and that's a gift we want to give you. And you're, if you're you know, now that you've made it here to the end of this, uh, yes. this webinar, it's going to be right here on the bottom of your screen, so you can get that right here. That's right, as we've promised that it would be. So that's something that we really want you to get into because we take a great deal of pride in what we've put into that. There's a lot of information already in that that we've created for you. So it's going to go beyond what we have here for you. It's going to be in the create your own legend mode, which again, we spend most of our time doing. And it's a 10 week e-course. You're gonna get an episode every single week uh, delivered right to your e email box. And right, and, and John, it was John who wanted to know if it was two, so that we didn't want to overload you. So it's not, even though we do give you a lot of information right away, as soon as you get into the, the first email that comes to you, gives you a lot of free information from us and how we did videos and how you can have uh, introduce yourself our audio product that we have there that That's we're right. giving. So we give away a fair amount of information right away and then we're taking you over that time. So we hope you'll take advantage of that as well. Go over to createyourownlegendnow.com right. as well as looking at the things that we've been offering to you here during this webinar. And I'm just going to say let's let's keep our, our logic really simple here. So if in the beginning when we talked about assess, you go out and you do that assessment, you find negative information, what is it that you want to do? Well, you want to come to repairyourownlegendnow.com. You want to enter your information on that first page that takes you to the inside page that has all this information that, that we're talking about right now. But the, on that inside page, you again want to enter your information in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see it. It's very clearly marked. But that's our emergency triage area where we will personally you know, get back to you uh, as quickly as possible to right. get working on that. If you don't find that negative content, you're either in that neutral category or that you're not finding enough content. Well, we want to invite you over, as Charlie just said, to createyourownlegendnow.com. Enter your information in the upper right-hand corner there, and we're going to show you exactly how to start building your legend, how to create uh, you know, just a really powerful personal brand that is going to get you what you want, and in the process, protect you from ever ending up on this repair. So, That's right, so. and, and we break it down. We make it simple for the person who's just starting. We make it comprehensive for someone who's been there for a while, and we have some advanced techniques for those people that have really been doing this for a while, but they're saying, you know, I'm not quite getting what I need to get, so that we take you in through all of that. So 
We're wrapping up here. We see that yeah. the clock is moving on. We appreciate over. the time that you've uh, you've spent here with us today. We know there's an awful lot of good information there for you. We thank you for being here on this webinar, for listening to what we're doing here. Um, and if there's anything else we can do, by all means, our contact information is right there as well, createyourownlegendnow.com. Our contact information is there. You can see videos from us. You can read more about who we are. You can see this crazy antics that we do that have gotten us a lot of attention in the things that Absolutely. we've been doing in video. So. But I would definitely say take action today. You know, don't be passive about this because if you don't control your online identity, trust me, somebody else will. Somebody else will. It's time for you. Now's the time for you to do that. Thanks very much for joining us. Okay, I thought that went really well. Good people, and it was some really good questions from some of these folks too. And so I was really excited to see the kinds of things that they were Absolutely. getting involved well, we, with. We've got a lot of emails to write now, though. Well, we do. I mean, I see all these other questions that are still here on this, and um, we'll be so, busy for a while. Yeah, so we'll be busy for a while, and that's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll get great questions. It looks like the ones I was looking at uh, make a lot of sense. Well, they do, and and clearly they, you know, you kind of hit that nerve, and people really want to go on with it. So it, it's great. We'll get right back to them just as fast as we can. So that, it's, it's been terrific.